गुड इवनिंग ऑल ऑफ यू एंड एज द चीफ हैज ऑलरेडी इंडिकेटेड इट मार्क्स बिगिनिंग ऑफ अ रिलेशनशिप दैट विल बी हाईली अनरिचिंग फॉर मी ऑनरेबल चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ जस्टिस रमेश सिन्हा एंड ऑल्सो चांसलर ऑफ हिदायतुल्ला नेशनल लॉ यूनिवर्सिटी द चांसलर इज लक्की आई वॉज गवर्नर स्टेट ऑफ वेस्ट बंगाल आई वॉज चांसलर ऑफ सेवरल यूनिवर्सिटीज मोर देन थ्री डजन बट इट वॉज टर्बुलेंट ही इज लक्की टू हैव सच एन ऑडियंस सच अ वाइस चांसलर ऑल आर इन सिंक He comes from a distinguished lineage. His father could not take oath of the High Court judge, even after the appointment was so declared, on account of cruel hand of destiny. But he brings on the table rich experience of Allahabad High Court, the largest High Court of Bharat. When Allahabad High Court. had centennial celebrations they came out with two volumes of anecdotes i'll share three of them so that your connect with him continues to be all the more strengthened one a division bench in allahabad high court headed by a judge like him would never interrupt a lawyer it was a principle not to be violated ever so a lawyer continued arguing for two and a half days challenging validity of an act after he had concluded submissions the senior judge said mr lawyer have you concluded your submissions ka yes would you check up the act has already been repealed <laughs> <coughs> the second was those were the times when we didn't have that kind of electricity or other mechanisms So in Allahabad High Court, judges had cozy atmosphere. They had those kinds of mechanical fans, physically driven, and cuss cuss water is is falling there. So the senior judge found the ecosystem in the court very soothing, and he thought he must attend to his sleep. The junior was a very disciplined judge. he never decided with the senior he also followed the senior the problem was for the lawyer what should he do now so those were the days when law books were very heavy they are still but not that heavy so he managed to ensure that one of the heavy law books drops on the floor from the table the senior says yes mr so and so come my lords one at a time he really comes from a very large high court where judges even those times could not recognize each other so a learned judge a senior judge was in his chamber he was about to go to the court around 10:30 as is the time he was with a friend another gentleman walks in robe the judge stares at him as if there is an intrusion and you know what the gentleman said i am a judge of this court i am sharing bench with you at 10:30 therefore i am here friends i advise you all of you to go through those two volumes of alabad high court that carries these real events last one of them in the corridor one senior advocate asked another who's arguing quick came the response the learned judge then the second one asked for whom response was there i leave it at that you need to fully draw on the experience of the chief justice i did it when i was so advised while being a very young president of rajasthan high court bar at the age of 33 you don't wait for the physical form of those two volumes you have enough of it on the google platform professor dr v c vivekanand 
vice chancellor of this prestigious university named after a great son of the soil my predecessor in office a distinguished chief justice but the only person in the entire country and the entire history so far who discharged the functions of chief justice of india vice president of india and also president of india a man of great learning a chairman rajya sabha i have the benefit of his directives and the decisions he rendered now that you are in third decade the beginning of third decade of this great university you can take pride in the fact that you have a motto before you to live up to the high life dignified life life of knowledge and learning which late justice hidayatullah led justice ji raghuram former director national judicial academy located in bhopal am i right sir you can have a deep connect with the national judicial academy also it plays a pivotal role and there is greater need now of interaction of young minds with those who are in the higher echelons of judiciary dr vipan kumar registrar hnlu and most important members of the faculty boys and girls from this institute and some other institutes my greetings to you at the outset i will seek indulgence of the chancellor i seek to invite students from hidayatullah national university and also from those institutes that are present here to visit indian parliament as my guest <laughs> boys and girls we have a structured mechanism your visit will be rewarding and fruitful my official will be in contact with the vice chancellor i hope it is done soon enough legal profession has qualitatively gone in a different groove there was a time when they used to say sir jokingly it is difficult to pass in chartered accountancy equally difficult to fail in law no longer legal education now is premium education and your institute is one of the best in the world the avenues that are open to you you just cannot imagine i'll come to that a little later so you in a country of 1.4 billion are privileged honored to get such kind of quality education you will have to live up to the expectations of your parents your teachers and the country i have no doubt you will do it friends why i call you lucky i'll tell you i go back to my days i am the oldest perhaps here he, he puts me to some challenge <laughs> but i score over him by few days <clears throat> look at the system which you have got now there was a time when our power corridors were infested with corrupt elements the elements the licensing exercises done by them the extra legally leveraged decision making nothing could happen without corruption being rewarded and that was the greatest threat to talent that denied every meritorious person of a level playing field in last 10 years power corridors have been totally sanitized of corruption those who extra legally leveraged the decision making that category has become extinct and have it from me it can never be revived you therefore have in the country that is home to 16th of humanity an ecosystem where there will be fair treatment equitable treatment and corruption free governance 
The second aspect, and which is equally important, democracy has a meaning only when there is equality before law. Democracy cannot fructify into good value mechanism unless all are equal before law. We now have a system. All are subject to law. No one is above law. I am sure you must have seen contemporary events. But you as young people, boys and girls, must be on guard. You are thinking minds. You are discerning minds. How can people in this country take to streets when they get a notice from court? We are living in times, unfortunate times, that our, resist, our judiciary reflects a robust judicial mechanism in the world. Its independence is beyond question. We are lucky to have at the moment a Chief Justice of India who apart from being academically very brilliant, he is very passionate about values. He is more passionate about nurturing people like you. His heart and soul is in the growth of young minds. <coughs> He has improved the ecosystem of judicial access, which globally is being followed by many countries. I had the occasion to share dice with him recently, where we had people from judicial systems of South, global South countries. And when they came to know what has been done in this country to facilitate justice availability, they were stunned. They have to follow it. So everything is now lined up and you can just look back in last one year. Those who need justice no longer have to wait for justice. That is the spinal strength of our democratic values being nurtured by a sound judicial system. We have in this country a leadership that is bringing about impactful challenges to execution. Challenges which we started to think about. I was elected to parliament in 1989. I was a minister in 1990. I had the occasion, painful occasion, a real pain that our gold had to be airlifted in a plane to be placed to two banks in Switzerland to sustain our financial credibility. But you are lucky to be living in times where India's rise in the Committee of Nations on Economic Front is being recognized. Just a decade ago, our country was taken to be one of the fragile five countries in the world, a burden on the globe. Our economy was tottering. The world was concerned. And look at where we have come in 10 years. We today are the world's fifth largest global economy. We have overtaken UK, who ruled over us for centuries. We have overtaken France. From fragile five, our journey to big five is a unique testament to the vision of the Prime Minister. Boys and girls, by 2030, we would have overtaken the economies of Japan and Germany. We'll be third largest global economy. Why I say so? All this has a meaning for you. You will have plethora of opportunities. Vistas will open for you. You have imminent people on the dais. Don't confine your thinking to traditional system of legal services. They are undergoing big change. You are imminently suited to contribute in policy evolutions. Only yesterday I was reflecting when ICC International Court of Arbitration had its centennial celebrations. I happened to be part of it in Paris. I was part of the commission also there for nine years and member of the court for three years. But now I find 
Indian talent doesn't lag behind. You are the ones, if you choose to take to arbitral process seriously, you'll have enough avenues. You know more than I do, being young minds, disruptive technologies are overtaking us. Artificial intelligence one, internet of things. But this will bring legal challenges, a challenge that will be required to be addressed by lightning speed. There never earlier was a concept of emergency arbitrators. There is one. All I mean to indicate is that you are at a time in history, in a country, the world is looking at us. There was a time when the world used to guide us. Now International Monetary Fund says India is a favorite destination, global destination of investment and opportunity. It offers fertile ground for innovation. World Bank has taken our country as one of those that offer to the entire world a model for emulation of digitization. And why not? Look at our statistics for 2022. Our digital transactions in 2022, boys and girls, were more than that of USA, UK, France and Germany. It doesn't stop here. Hold your breath. Four times the combined transactions of USA, UK, France and Germany, that is Bharat, our digital transactions. Look at our per capita internet usage. Look at it. It is more than that of USA and China taken together. This has been made possible because of the genius of our people. Our people have created such a rise for this country which is unstoppable. And the underlying theme for that is that there is an ecosystem now available in our country where every young boy and girl is fully enabled to exploit his or her talent, her potential, unleash energy, realize dreams and aspirations. The government is always in your aid. Our Amrit Kaal is our Gaurav Kaal. But in 2047, when some of us may not be around, you will be taking Bharat on your shoulders to Bharat 2047 as its foot soldiers and ensure Bharat being a most developed country of the world and a global leader. I'm sure that will happen. Now we see all around there is buoyancy, there is optimism. But in the process, we always have to be extremely careful about certain pernicious tendencies. It is not an option. It is must that we always keep interest of our nation ahead of anything else. We must believe in our country. We must be proud Indians, take pride in our global achievements, phenomenal rise and the respect we have earned in the world. The world looks at us now. There was a time when they used to render advice to us. Now our Bharat is settler of agendas for the entire world. That ecosystem was not there earlier. Friends, all this has happened because we have visionary leadership. I am not a stakeholder in politics. I am a stakeholder in governance. And more than me, young boys and girls are stakeholders in governance. Because the world belongs to you. Amongst all of us present here, you will have to live the longest. Therefore, being very critical stakeholders in governance, you have to be discerning minds. I do not know what happens to some people. They have very poor appetite for growth trajectory of our nation. Whenever something good happens in our country, either in the country or outside, 
they make an effort, mischievous effort, to set up float narratives that are anti-national. You as brilliant young minds are fully unable to neutralize such forces. As a matter of fact, I'll put it to you. It is your duty, pious obligation, to do it. Your silence will ever resonate in your ears as the years will go by. You need to speak out. Nothing can be more dangerous in society. Nothing. Then an informed mind, an intelligent mind, a mind who is taken to be very knowledgeable, trying to exploit ignorance of the people to generate political equity. I'll make reference to one epochal development that took place in the country on September 20 and 21, 2023. For a good three decades, efforts were made to ensure that we get women reservation bill passed. It could not happen for one reason or the other. But the Prime Minister could bring it about. And on 21st September, Rajya Sabha finally passed that bill, providing for horizontal and vertical reservation to the extent of one-third seats in Lok Sabha and state legislatures for women. Now, this can fructify only after delimitation. You all know it. We have a distinguished mind taking otherwise. What happens to it? Why not 2024? I just uh, planted a sapling. Now I should go out and see why it has not become a big tree. It will take its own time. This is an epochal development, a great development. Secondly, to the girl students in particular, not only this reservation, but much beyond that, Sandaryan 3 success, when we talk about it, when we talk about 23rd August 2023, declared by our country as a National Space Day, when we remember with pride India being the only country on the planet to have landed on the South Polo Moon, where we put Tiranga and Shiv Shakti, Shiv Shakti point there, we remember the rocket woman. We remember now combat pilots. There is no walk of life where our girls have not outshone the boys. They have made impactful presence in the growth trajectory of this nation. We are in the front league of nations of the world in doing justice to our mothers and sisters. Friends, I wouldn't like to take more time, but I would say certain things. I have always been number one in my class. I was always worried what will happen if I don't come at number one. This was an obsession with me. I lived with it. Luckily, I retained number one. I learned too late in life that nothing would have happened. Heavens would not have fallen if I was not number one. Someone would have had the satisfaction of being number one and I would have made more friends. I would have involved with greater extracurricular activities and therefore my advice to you, never entertain tension and stress. Heavens have never fallen historically, why would they fall for you? Number two, nothing is more dangerous in life to have a brilliant idea and you make your mind parking place for it. Merely because you think you may fail in the venture. Never fear failure. Think out of the box. Nothing has fructified globally that has changed the world ecosystem in first attempt. And therefore, if you have an idea, be innovative. Execute it. Don't fear failure. Failure will be a stepping stone of success and that is reflected in our Chandrayaan 3. I was governor of the state of West Bengal and it was September 2019. I had gone to the Science City. Boys and girls in this number were present. I had invited them. Chandrayaan 2 was to land around 2 a.m. I was with brilliant boys and girls like you along with my wife. 
Chandrayaan 2 did not land successfully. I told them, boys and girls, we have succeeded. Before I could complete my sentence, Prime Minister of the country was on television with the scientists telling them, we'll make it next time, this time the achievement has been really remarkable. We did succeed. You need hand-holding when you are making an endeavor of this kind. Our girls hockey team at Tokyo performed gloriously, couldn't make it. The Prime Minister talked to each of them. There were tears in their eyes, but they knew that this hand-holding would finally strengthen our achievements in the world of sports and games. And we saw the results recently. What I'm telling you is that the opportunity which you've got in this country is unique. At a time when the world is looking at us, you have to make most of it. I find when I talk to young boys and girls, particularly in the field of legal education, they are thinking out of the box, but they need to think really, really out of the box because there are many opportunities as compared to other courses. Legal courses are turning out to be the best, potentially very, very rewarding. In your distinguished career, you have the occasion to intermix your credentials with other courses. And luckily for you, national education policy evolved by this country after more than three decades makes great provisions, facilitating provisions. I am sure your mentors, the faculty, will be able to guide you in that direction. In this country, Bharat, which is a civilizational history of more than 5,000 years, deep-rooted culture during celebration of G20, the most successful event the nation has ever seen, with on 60 locations in this country covering every state and union territory, 200 interactions, the world leaders were stunned when they came to grips with our culture. You have to nurture it. You have to believe in it. Any walk of life, when you will look at our reservoir of knowledge in the shape of Vedas and Upanishads, you will be started. I had the occasion to indicate to the Honorable Minister for Human Resource in Rajya Sabha that make available copies of Vedas to every member parliament. Because I find while we talk of Vedas and Upanishads, many of us have not even seen them. I call upon you, please focus on them. Your horizon will be widened. Your thirst for knowledge will continue ever. Because even after you leave this institute, your learning does not end. It will ever continue. Friends, I would conclude and then take some questions. Why this country has come to this level suddenly? You may be in school a decade ago, but we were overtaken by falling economy, despondency, growth potential not being visible, and that was on one account. Inclusive, ambitious, action-oriented, and decisive leadership. Some people say, at this position, holding the august position of Vice President of India, is it not really saying something about the executive? I am not on back foot. Very consciously, I called our Prime Minister at a function in Mumbai, Yukpurus. Why? You young boys and girls, analyze, go to public domain, find out the attributes whom we can label as Yug Purush. After all, there will have to be a Yug Purush at a particular point of time. There can be no better place than Bharat. 
a man who has changed revolutionized lives of our girls just imagine banking inclusion explosion no one no one ever thought of it providing a toilet in every home taking care of dignity of women in particular getting water in every household and taking care of the tears by providing gas connections when state facilitates ownership of houses preferentially ownership is shared with the with the gender of the girls your gender coming back to farmers their upliftment coming back to youth making available an ecosystem without corruption having a system where no one is above law and these things have happened only on one count that is you have to be inclusive which means non discriminatory everyone has to be treated even handedly everyone has to be treated on merit pattern is cannot be the way out then you have to be ambitious in a country like ours you look at developed country they don't have a history more than 300 500 or let's say 800 years we have more than 5000 years of history we have to be ambitious then we have to be action oriented to be ambitious inclusive without results makes no sense and this happens when you take decisions just travels last 3 4 months we had the world's one of the biggest convention centers bharat mandapam we had yashobhumi we had put chandrayaan there we have brought about epochal development in a special session of parliament reservation for women we are a country in the world that is focusing on disruptive technologies we are not waiting for others to innovate technology whether it is quantum computing we have quantum commission green hydrogen commission we are doing it with respect to 6g already we are one of the few countries in the world the number is not in double digit where we will roll out commercialization of 6g from 2025 onwards till 2030 so boys and girls there is everything available to you now you are in the best part of the globe you are in land of spirituality you are in land of culture you are in a land of rich history you only have to play on the front foot with the straight bat as per your aptitude before i conclude i have said one thing i invite you to visit indian parliament i would also with the indulgence of the chancellor the honorable chief justice of chatisgarh high court direct indian council of world affairs to have an mou with your institute that will offer you avenues indian council of world affairs i happen to be its chairman is headed as director by a brilliant lady ms thakur that mou will be signed this year i am aware we don't have even a month left but then the man who is changing the world for us the man who is changing our lives the man who is ambitious action oriented decisive i am sure we'll do it my office will settle the date with the office of the chancellor thank you so much boys and girls good question It was indeed an insightful address. Two questions. Uh, there was an array of questions from the students which we have received. So I request the students whom, whose name I call upon to come near the stage, and I uh, read out the question. I call upon Miss Richa Arora, third year H N U. Kindly proceed near the stage. Her question is. India is often dubbed as come on, come a noisy democracy. Come on, one second. Yes, come on, come on, come on, Rita. Ask your question. The mic is on. Make sure. Eh? 
A very good evening, sir. Uh, so my question to you is uh, that India is often dubbed as a noisy democracy. As the chairman of uh, Rajya Sabha, uh, do you agree or disagree with that, sir? Well, I have generated a connect with you. <laughs> and it's going to be an unforgettable experience for me. Our constituent assembly, and as the students of law, you will be able to go through it. Our constituent assembly engaged in formation of the constitution for three years. And it comprised of people of great, great eminence founding fathers of our constitution. For three years, they did not have a single disruption, single disturbance in the house, no placards, no raising of slogans. Our founding fathers were deprived of what I see every day. <laughs> they engaged in debate, dialogue, discussion, deliberation. And mind you, the issues before them were far more contentious, far more divisive. They worked hard, consensually. I can understand there can be a different point of view. We must always be open to the other point of view. More often than not, the other point of view may be the correct point of view. But if we put temple of democracy to sacrilege of this kind by engaging in disruption and disturbance, we are not doing service to you. I am doing all I can under my command to persuade fellow parliamentarians their productivity in the house must go up. They must be a source of enlightenment for you. They must bear a conduct which you can emulate. But you have a role to play. Everyone here has a role to play. Social media is a great power. You have to disapprove such a demeanor. You have to indicate as a narrative that a parliamentarian is required to engage in debate, discussion, dialogue, deliberation for public welfare. I know there can't be easy answer to her question. Thank you so much, sir. I next request Mr. So, Samir, uh, Samar V. Shukla, third year HMLU, to kindly proceed. Pradam, sir. sir, from being uh, such a great lawyer to being such a humble pub public servant, what inspired you, sir? Kindly tell us, sir. When the chief will bear me out, the year I was married, I became a lawyer. <laughs> and legal profession is known as a jealous mistress. So my wife had to bear with the jealous mistress till president of India, on 20th of July 2019, issued a warrant for me, warrant of appointment. Warrant will unsettle anyone. So on 20th of July, I had again two situations. That happened to be birthday of my wife, and the warrant was signed on that day. 20th of July 2019 was also the 50th anniversary of Neil Armstrong landing on the moon. Because these events will shake you are remembered for other reasons also. But ever since I took oath as Governor of the State of West Bengal and thereafter in the present assignment, I have bid goodbye to the jealous mistress that has brought comfort to my wife. But being in the profession, having high satisfaction quotient for myself that was amply reflected in my bank accounts. I feel the loss of it. But then, in a country like ours, 
we have to sacrifice ourselves the chief justice here could have made many times more in any other walk of life some of you when you will take up government assignments you will find you can get many times more outside i saw reflected on the civil services day that every person who gets into the indian civil service makes a sacrifice because he or she has avenues outside where they will get geometric dividends here it is arithmetic taking care of inflation in a graded manner so that's one situation but then as long as the jealous mistress was with me i fully take took care of the jealous mistress but the moment uh, warrant was signed by the president i was visited with another, another consequence warrant itself is draconian second was suspension of my sanad so i am no longer technically in the legal profession as a lawyer thank you thank you sir once again a deep sense of gratitude you all are like my children trust me make a visit to indian parliament you can make it in batches there will be seamless coordination it will be rewarding experience for you and the upcoming session of parliament has enough homework for you we are dealing with three important pieces of legislation whereby we'll be shedding of colonial legal regime attend to the debates of the house and see the proceedings of the joint parliamentary committee i would send a copy of that committee report once it is laid before the house to the vice chancellor so that he can distribute amongst you all thank you so much thank you sir as we conclude this remarkable event